What can we learn from famous last words? The more uh, famous you are, the more well-known you are, the more likely it is that your last words are going to be recorded. It's very likely that your last words are going to be important to people. People are going to want to know what was the last thing he said. There is no middle ground when we're talking about the spiritual war that's going on today in this world. There is no middle ground. You are either on God's side or you're on the side of the adversary. Matthew chapter 12, verse 30. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathers not with me scatters abroad. But there is only one truth that does not change, that has not changed, that we have a lifeline out of the turmoil. God has given ample evidence for faith. He will never remove all excuse for unbelief. All who look for hooks to hang their doubts on certainly will find them. You will find reasons to not believe if you go out looking for reasons to not believe. And those who refuse to accept and obey God's word until, until every objection has been removed, and there is no longer any opportunity for doubt, will never come to the light. Richard Dawkins has stated that there's nothing at all that could ever possibly, nothing could convince him that there is a God. It's not very scientific, is it? Let's look at those who were Christians, professed, and who had submitted their lives to Jesus Christ. We have Martin Luther's quote, O oh, my Father, God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all consolation, I thank thee for having revealed to me thy well-beloved Son, in whom I believe, whom I have preached and acknowledged, loved and celebrated, and whom the Pope and the impious persecute. I commend to you my soul. Jesus, my Lord, I am quitting this earthly body. I am leaving this life, but I know I shall abide with you for eternity. After that, Martin Luther repeated three times the words of the psalm, Into thy hands I commit my spirit. God of truth, thou hast redeemed me. Now that seems a little different than I am perplexed. It's a very different experience. It's a very different report. Author John Bunyan, the author of Pilgrim's Progress, one of the famous, well-known works of Christian fiction. Quote, Weep not for me, but for yourselves. I go to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will, through the mediation of his blessed Son, receive me, even though I'm a sinner, where I hope we shall meet to sing the new song and remain everlastingly happy in a world without end. Compared to Anton LaVey, what have I done there's something very wrong here. Christians in the first century who were persecuted by the uh, Roman Empire, who were led into the Colosseum to be torn apart by lions, to be burned at the stake, could all be heard singing hymns. That's the Holy Spirit, my friends. That's, what, that's the spirit that you want. That's the one you want to be with you. The one that gives you that kind of peace. The one who takes you out of suffering. That is a God worthy of worship. Patrick Henry, Doctor, I wish you to observe how real and beneficial the religion of Christ is to a man about to die. And in his will he stated, This is all the inheritance I give to my dear family. The religion of Christ will give them one which will make them rich indeed. John Newton, composer of the, I guess maybe the most well-known Christian hymn, Amazing Grace, was quoted on his deathbed as saying, I am still in the land of the dying. I shall be in the land of the living soon. What did this man know? Through God's word, he knew that I shall be in the land of the living soon. Another quote from John Newton, I am not the man I ought to be, I am not the man I wish to be, and I am not the man I hope to be, but by the grace of God, I am not the man I used to be. And I share that statement with you because that, that is my statement of gratitude. 
Thank God I'm not the man I used to be. John Wesley, the English reformer. Uh, quote, on Tuesday, March 1st, Wesley called for a pen and ink, but could not write. His devoted band leader, Betsy uh, Ritchie, said, Let me write for you, sir. Tell me what you would say. Nothing, answered Wesley, but that God is with us. He then astonished his attendants by bursting out with the last hymn he had led at the city road a week before. And those words were, I'll praise my maker while I have breath. And when my voice is lost in death, praise shall employ my nobler powers. My days of praise shall never be passed while life and thought and being last or immortality endures. He urged that his sermon on the love of God be printed and given away for free. But then his mumbling became incomprehensible, so he merely repeated at intervals, The best of all is God with us. Throughout the night, he tried to sing the same hymn, but could only get out the phrase, I'll praise, I'll praise. After a last farewell, he died on Wednesday morning. Final words of individuals can provide a look inside the mind into the reality of one's state. Upon reflection of their time on earth, their remarks are highly instructive. Our prayer today should be that upon the occasion of our final breath, we should also have such peace and comfort of God's saints.